Hey y'all, so today we're diving into HDRP content. I'm gonna specifically highlight how to use volumetric shaders, which is something that's a bit newer within what Unity offers within HDRP. Offers a lot of heavy hitting capability. And I have Quixel up in the background, soon to be fab, because I am snagging a few high fidelity assets from here during the period that all of these assets are free to use for anybody. Um, so I'll go ahead and jump over into the hub and I'm going to create this in Unity 6. This is 60020 F1 and I'm gonna do an HDRP core project called Volumetric Shaders. Let's create this project and I'll see you in there. So while this is loading, Basically, the project that I want to tackle today is something a bit spooky, a bit Halloween themed since we're in the month of uh, October. And I think what I want to do is put a pumpkin up on something like a stump in a kind of forest scene with a lot of volumetric fogs on the ground. Now, the reason that you would use something like a volumetric shader instead of just a regular um, volumetric fog or fog post-processing type effect is because this one specifically allows you to view the fog from outside of the confines of the volume that the fog lives within. Um, so it's a really neat way to visualize pretty complex um, kind of wisps or fogs or whatnot. Wow, and actually that loaded extraordinarily quick. So no need to cut, I can actually just jump straight in. So this is our HDRPC loading in, awesome. So now I can go ahead and exit out, go to Window, Pac-Man, come over here into High Definition RP, go to Samples, and we should have Volumetric, here we go, Volumetric Samples. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this. All right, so I have all of my assets here in a folder. I just closed out my Volumetric Fogs, or my Volumetric Shaders, rather, and I wanna pull these folders into my project. So I can see that volumetric is down here underneath HDRP 1703. I'm gonna come into assets and create a new folder and just call this Quixel. Now inside of here, I can drag in my folders and we will let all of that load in. Now this has different resolution of normal maps for these assets and I don't intend on doing anything like an LOD system. So importing all of this is probably a bit overkill, but I'm gonna go ahead and import it just so that I have it. I can use it as options. Uh, also worth noting that these do not come through by default with something like a mask map already created, which is that metallic smoothness uh, AO, I believe is the third channel on a mask map. And these come through individual albedo, normal, uh, maybe there's a roughness. But essentially you have to kind of play with it a bit. Uh, you could go in and generate the mask map using something like a substance painter quite easily by importing the textures. Or you can go into Photoshop if you want to go old school and just pull them into the colored channels themselves. However, I'm just going to make do with what I have so I don't make this a 30 minute tutorial. So now I have everything here in a folder and I have my volumetric samples here. So we can go into the prefabs and we can go into, here's our volumetric heart. Let's just see what this looks like. So this is what one of these volumetric shaders looks like. And you'll notice that it does pick up the light behind it, which is great. So I'll go ahead and delete that and let's find, we have cloudy sample, foggy orb and light, fumes, ground smoke. Let's do some ground smoke. I'm pretty happy with that. It's picking up the light nicely. And now what I want to do is pull in a few of these Quixel assets. So I'm going to pull in the mossy ground first. Pull this right over here. And I'm going to create a material. And I'll just call this mossy ground. I'm gonna assign this. I may speed through this stuff so that I get to focus more on how the volumetric shader is impacting the scene. Um, but for now, I'll go ahead and continue with this. So here we have the 8K map. So this is a displacement fuzz 
normal roughness. So I'm going to come back into here and I'm going to use this as the normal. And just make sure this is set to normal map. Apply. We can do a tutorial separately on how to import textures and materials if that's helpful. I'm going to throw this roughness on the mask map. I'm positive that's not going to work. But it works maybe well enough for me for now. So I can pull the metallic way down because it shouldn't be metal at all. Smoothness can come down. Something kind of like that I'm okay with. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it's certainly, it works for now. So there are a few settings that we can play with within here, but for the sake of this demo, I'm probably just going to keep it as is. And I know this is sloppy, but I'm just going to go ahead and do something like this, where the smoke is in here. Perfect. So all I've done is duplicate the smoke. Again, Not I'm not working in the most efficient capacity, but I think it's going to do what we want it to do as far as our effect and getting something made quickly. Cool. So now I want to go into Sun. All right, so hopefully that shows a bit of how the volumetric fog is actually working. If I come down into here and we go into the fog volume itself, we grab the ground smoke and we du double click that, you can get into the actual shader graph itself and start to look at how this was built. And there are some nice kind of tool tips scattered throughout here. So if I want to, I can come into top color, bottom color. These appear to be exposed variables. So I can even come over into here, into my ground. And ideally, if I change this, it's going to change all of this. So it's basically a volumetric material that allows you to control the different pieces of it through a shader graph, which is pretty awesome. All right, so we'll do something like that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. I think the last thing that I want to do is just come into the, let's see, we have our sky and fog volume, physically based sky, looks good. So all of that's pretty solid. Let's raise our ground tint up just a little bit so that it's kind of a spooky night moon emissive environment. Come over here and make sure that our filter is all the way white. And then I want to change by clicking on this sun icon into moon. All right. And in turning on my gizmos, the reason that everything just went dark is because my moon, as we were playing with it to get kind of a late dusk effect, is actually way over here. So I want to come right back in, turn off my gizmos. Let's start to see the moon peeking through. 
looking pretty good. And now I want to come over into my sky and fog volume, go into exposure. And I want to work at it just like that. And I'm just going to pull this back up. So that our moon starts looking a bit more like a moon. Then I want to come in here, maybe we'll add in a bloom. And let's just do all and add the intensity. Maybe next I'll come back into one of my maps over here and assign that as a surface texture. Okay, and then I feel like it's probably too warm, so pull it cooler. Now that I kind of have the fog lit up, I want to come over into the inspector. Let's do a game object, light. I'm just going to do a spotlight to make this easy on myself. And I want to move this over this way. Let's turn on gizmos, open up that angle. And I want to turn off. Okay, good. No shadows. Volumetrics. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Then we want to turn this cold. Turn the intensity way, way, way down. Turn off the gizmos. Okay, now let's pull the main camera over to where we want it. I'm going to use this preview button over here. Pull it back. Now I feel pretty fine about that. All right, so now what I want to do is just do a basic animator. I'll go to timeline, create, create the director. Drag the main camera down, add an animation track, record. Now we're recording position and rotation. And now over the course of whatever, six-ish seconds, I want to do a push, a rotate, and end the recording. Come back over into the game view. And grab that, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. I still feel like I'm losing way too much detail on the trees. So perhaps I can come back into my spotlight. Just pull that up a little bit. Into my camera. So let's see. Perhaps there's a wild looking orb here. I think that works for now. Let's uh, let's see what that looks like. So if I come down, something like that. Now let's just hit play and see what our camera looks like. That is pretty cool. Now let's have something kind of creepy here. It's animating through. So now I can come over here and I will grab the main camera timeline, drag my foggy orb down here, add an animation track. Boom.
Here it is. And let's come over to 480 so that it still looks Something like that. I'm pretty happy with that. So now let's stop the record, come over to our scene and hit play. And now we have something that's probably spooky, eerie, a little sci-fi. Something like that. So you can start to see quickly how you can grab these prefabs, start to work with these volumetric shaders. And if you want to make any changes, as we looked at before, you have the entire shader graph to start digging in, understanding how they work, what each of these nodes do, and seeing how they plug in to make the final effect. I hope that you all learned something. You got a bit out of this. Hopefully this starts your journey down volumetric shaders and seeing how valuable they can be. Go in. Again, they're inside the samples of your HDRP and Pac-Man. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. I'll see you all in the next one.